the band and our spirit teams here uh, to make it great um, and so many people who've been working hard and fast to make this all come together I just want to thank everyone and I know we got a lot of Trojan family watching online so fight on and start with my warmest welcomes to Eric Musselman our new coach and to his wonderful lovely family not all of whom but most of whom are here with us today we have Danielle and Mike we have Michael and Matthew and Mariah and his mom, Chris. So thank you all for being here. Now we're saying a little bit of welcome home because of your long ties in California. But I'm just realizing we're also saying hello to Ohio because he and I grew up pretty close in location. And Chris is from there. So we Ohioans, we travel well. <laughs> Love to be out here. Um, it's really great to be celebrating today. Most of you know that USC Athletics was really one of the five presidential moonshots that we started getting going when I first arrived here. So we had this great moonshot, and this is no small step. In fact, it's a giant leap into the Big Ten as we move forward, and it's a new era for Trojans men's basketball. And we know that you are the right person for that job, Eric, and really excited to see this. Now, Jen, who is fantastic, identified Eric right away. 
and so, so excited about that. That was her top choice immediately. And in speaking with him, I have to say, I saw very quickly how he shares values that both Jen and I share. Um, expectations to lead with integrity, to lead with character, student-centric focus, that's what it's all about for all of us. He cares deeply about the well-being of his students and their success both on and off the court, really important to us. And he wants to create leaders for life. People can make a real impact in the world, and we share that excited about seeing that go forward. You know, an athletics program has to be more than a portfolio of teams who are competing for championships. You know, we want that same sort of shared value that our world-class researchers and high-performing student, student athletes have, that they can compete with the best. And that's what we're seeing here. We're working on it in so many ways. You see these amazing facilities. We're trying to have facilities, and you know we're doing this in many of our athletic programs here to have them be a place where students can compete with the best. And we've been really working on the Galen Center and now you get to see it today uh, for the first time um, in this wonderful con press conference. I also want to say thank you to Andy Enfield, to Coach. Uh, he was absolutely someone who cared about students, cared about building culture, cared about their well-being, and he led through COVID, and we all know what that was like to lead through COVID for all of our students, but especially our student athletes. He also helped to ensure a safe culture, and he and his teams were people that helped save lives. And I will be forever grateful to them for that and for him leading with integrity, and of course, we all wish them the best uh, at the same time. And now I wanna thank Jen Cohen before I turn it over to the main event. Uh, Jen, what an amazing partner. So much fun working with you. Um, she's effecting nothing short of a dramatic transformation. You know, I've been thinking a lot about Taylor Swift and her tour, and I'm going to say, Jen, you are the embodiment of can't, uh, Taylor in many ways, but can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. She brings that with us every day. And she knows what we need, and she works with her wonderful team to get it done right away. So I'm going to turn it over by saying, again, thank you. Welcome, Coach Musselman. Welcome to the family. And of course, fight on. Fight on. Fight on. our main speakers now, but I think we've got a jersey first, so uh, in, in a minute you will hear from our athletic director, Jennifer Cohen, and the 24th coach in the history of USC men's basketball, Eric Musselman. Dr. Folt, uh, for your remarks and your unwavering, where are you, by the way? I'm looking for you. Oh, there you are. Um, your unwavering commitment uh, to USC athletics and just your tremendous leadership. It starts at the top, right? And, and so we know how much you do for all of us, obviously, the support of the Galen Center, along with so many other projects, and you lead an incredible university. So thank you so much uh, for everything that you do. Where's Paul Perrier, a guy that likes to be behind the scenes? Paul, where are you? Yeah, I just want to uh, give a big thank you. Big thank you to you, Paul, uh, one of our executive athletic directors, our support administrator for men's basketball. Just been a great partner during this transition and uh, during this search, so really appreciate you. Also, too, want to echo uh, Dr. Fult's sentiments uh, to Andy and Amanda and their family. Um, he built a really strong foundation here and did a lot for USC men's basketball. He was great to work with and we wish him the best at SMU. This is a transformational day for USC men's basketball. I also just want to thank, look at this coach, look at all these people, right, the care. Um, I want to thank you all uh, for being here today uh, to welcome uh, Eric Musselman, his wife Danielle, his 
absolutely incredible family to our Trojan family. I came with C in August, and uh, since I got here, um, I've really learned and started to really understand what it means to be a Trojan and um, how special this university is and this community is. Um, and as Trojans, we really strive for excellence in everything that we do. We have heart, we're resilient. Trojans are bold, they're strong, they're together, and Trojans are winners. And that's really what led me to this guy, Eric Messelman. Uh, throughout our conversations and all the other conversations that we had with other people that knew Eric, worked with Eric, competed against Eric, it became very clear that he was the right person at the right time for USC men's basketball. So I'm just gonna brag and talk a little bit, Coach, about you here for a couple of minutes. There's many reasons why you're sitting here today as our new head coach, but there's a few I wanna hit on. First, he's a proven winner. He not only builds elite, high-performing teams, he knows how to sustain them. He has a bold vision and a plan for USC basketball. And it centers around very high expectations and standards for himself, for his players, and for his staff. I love the resiliency he's had in his career and his life. He's a very curious guy. He loves to learn, he loves to grow. He always wants to get better. I'm gonna state the obvious in this one. He is not shy. <laughs> we all know that. Um, he's got incredible energy and enthusiasm. We're going to the Big Ten, and we need an elite home court advantage. And Eric has proven that he can unite the student body, he can unite the fans, he can unite the community to fill up Galen Center and show everybody in the Big Ten that we have that home court advantage too. He's a relentless recruiter, unbelievable, and a developer of young men. He's put a lot of guys in the NBA. He's helped a lot of young men reach their goals. And finally, he is passionate specifically about USC men's basketball. Yeah. Coming back to his Southern California roots, he understands this city. He understands this region. He understands this university, and he believes in our potential. This was a really competitive search. We had a lot of interest in this position. I wanna thank all the other candidates that we had a chance to meet with, but it was very clear that the best of the best for USC men's basketball was Eric Musselman. So I am so Coach Musselman and your family as well. Let's go fight on. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, you know, when, when, when uh, opportunities like this are put in front of you, uh, leadership and, and the top of the leadership becomes so important um, for a coach to make a decision on next opportunity. And certainly through the conversations with Jen and with Dr. Fult, um, it became clear that this was a, a great, great place for not only myself, but also um, our family. And, and leadership is, is really the key uh, to why I'm sitting here, because it's, it's going to be a partnership. It's going to be something that we do together. Um, and so that was a, a big part of, of our family's decision once the opportunity was presented um, from Jen. And uh, we are more than excited. Um, as a family uh, for this opportunity. We really are, and we think that the potential here is, is, is through the roof. And, um, and so that's why we're sitting here as a, as a family, as the Musselman crew is here. Um, I will say that uh, the, the women's basketball team's success this year, um, <laughs> is, is incredible um, because during the um, interview process, they were making a, a huge run, and uh, it was so cool to watch uh, her teams play with such great pa passion, um, and, and a lot of the recruits that we were talking to are also watching uh, USC's women's basketball team because it was a, such a high-profile time uh, in the recruiting process, so um, that also is a big factor 
and a partnership that we want to uh, jump into as well um, because both our teams basketball wise can can uh, play off of each other in so many different ways um, so that's a big excite excitement for all of us as well um, obviously coach Enfeld's been mentioned in, in the coaching fraternity everybody has incredible respect uh, for Andy as a coach and a leader and he did great things for 11 years here and um, we want to just continue to what do things that he's done and then try to build on on some of those things as well um, and then I think the other thing for, for us as a family was uh, the opportunity to be able to come back uh, to Southern California this is actually uh, my third time in, in LA uh, my first job was out of college I graduated from the University of San Diego and uh, was fortunate enough to get a job with the LA Clippers as an account executive so I was trying to sell tickets in 1987 for the LA Clippers um, and I'll never forget my first, uh, the place that I rented was 44th and Highland in Manhattan Beach and uh, interesting enough we were on a plane flying here and uh, my roommate uh, Dan Lynch sent me a picture of that uh, place that we were living in and when we landed I got, I got that picture so uh, we're so, so excited uh, to be back here. Um, Danielle and I and our family also spent time uh, in Los Angeles when we worked for the D-League uh, Defenders, who was the Lakers G League team at the time. So third time in L.A. and uh, we couldn't be more excited. Um, you know, our vision is, uh, like Jen has mentioned, we have high standards, high expectations. Uh, we feel going into the Big Ten, you know, when you look at the landscape of college athletics, the Big Ten is as good as there is anywhere. And I'm coming from another place that was as good as anywhere in the SEC and those two conferences, um, you know, are proven to, to be where, where it's at right now in uh, college athletics. So we're fired up, we're excited, and uh, we can't wait to get started. And with that, I appreciate everybody coming out and we look forward to really uh, getting involved in the community, uh, unlike maybe, I don't know, unlike a lot of other people have, I don't know, but we look forward to really getting out in the community and, and being a part of this campus community as well. So appreciate it. And uh, I know these press conferences, they always, you know, it's, it's all talk and everything, and now, and now the real work begins. And uh, we'll see where we're at in November. And uh, we're going we're gonna to put a team on the floor that everybody's extremely proud of. We'll play with passion. We'll play with great energy, great enthusiasm. And uh, our team will play with great effort as well. So with that, I thank you. And uh, fight on. I thank you both. Uh, now we're going to open it up for some media questions. Uh, there are microphones going around. There will also be some additional media opportunities uh, after this. Um, so, as always, the band Jim Hill gets the first question. Thank you. Coach, congratulations and, and welcome. If there was one thing that you could promise the Trojan fans here this, this, uh, this morning about the effort of your, of your basketball team, what would that one thing be? Well, yeah, I think the, the biggest thing, Jim, is, is, is that our team plays for, for 40 minutes. Um, I look back at, you know, the last uh, nine years that we've been involved in college basketball. We've had some of the greatest comebacks um, in the history of college basketball, uh, down 22 and, 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 and continuing to compete. And I think that, you know, it's going to start in the summer with our guys, uh, them understanding the expectations of playing for 40 minutes, whether we're up, whether we're down. Um, and then having great belief that regardless of the score, or regardless of the time on the clock, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of what would seem impossible. There's a lot of ways to win basketball games when, when the odds are against you. And, uh, you know, so I would say just we want to, we want to play for 40 minutes, and everybody talks about that, but I think that um, if you look at our past uh, history with teams, that's, that's come, you know, come to truth, and, and, and this upcoming season, I hope, will, will be no different. Thank you. Everyone knows the legend Jim Hill, but please uh, state your, your name and affiliation just so Coach can get to know everybody. He's, he's the one who's new here. Uh, any other questions? Go ahead, Ryan. J. 
Jen, a rank RTL at times. Jen, I know President Fold was talking about how quickly you guys honed in on Eric as the, the top candidate. Can you tell us a little bit about that process and what it was that so quickly led you to settle in on it? Yeah, I mean, first I would say that athletic directors are very used to these processes being ready to happen at any moment at any time. So we always have lists and we always are keeping our eye on the talented coaches that are out there. Um, what really separated Eric or the the qualities that I described, I mean, we're looking for sustained success here and excellence at a high level. As, as Eric mentioned, we're going into arguably the most deep, strongest conference in the country, and we want to be the best at everything that we do here, and so it's the combination of Eric's experience. He's proven that he's, he knows how to do it, and he knows how to sustain it, and he's done that in more than one place. His enthusiasm and his passion is also a really important part of the, of the program, though, because we really want to create more excitement and energize, just like we've seen for women's basketball. We want to have the Galen rocking as well. And then this is a destination job, and you got to love this place. you got to know this place. you got to want to be here. And there was nobody that was more committed to USC than Eric Musselman. Connor, go ahead. Connor Morris at 247 Sports. Coach, congrats. I'm curious, when you have to come to a team like this where you're gonna have a lot of recruiting to do in the near future, what's your recruiting pitch to bring players to USC? Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if, um, you know, rec like from as far as recruiting pitch, I think it's about trying to sell a vision, um, you know, on, on what that individual player's uh, next eight to 12 months looks like, and then what the vision is for that player beyond, um, you know, the, the upcoming season. And obviously with the way the transfer portal is, you know, some players have, you know, four years of eligibility. Some, some players have one year of, of eligibility, but I think you want to try to um, lay a framework for, for what a player's role could look like. And then also from a player development standpoint, how are you going to develop a player because each player is going to have a different player development plan. He's going to, he's going to have a different timeline on where his career is going to take him. Um, so I don't know if, you know, I, I would say that um, individualizing our recruitment is going to be really, really important. Um, it's not, you know, we're not going to recruit in a, uh, in a cookie cutter way, so to speak, where it's just, uh, you know, different things are important to, to different people. And so, um, it'll be important for us to find out what, what's important and then make sure that that aligns not only with our coaching staff, but also the university. Luca. Hi, Eric. Uh, Luca Evans, Orange County Register. Jen mentioned, you know, you, you were hired in part to inspire and energize the, the community here, and you've had a track record of building programs, you know, and uh, Arkansas and Nevada and what have you. And in, in general, uh, you're entering the Big Ten with a fairly, you know, blank slate here at USC in terms of the roster. Just what are you going to be looking for? What is part of your vision to draw talent here and to really kind of inspire the community in LA? Yeah, look, I think I think with us, it's uh, you know, I think you've got to look at your conference and you've got to try to, you know, figure out how you can, you know, compete. Obviously, the Big Ten is known in basketball for having physicality, uh, for being a really good rebounding league. Um, for being a very well coached league that, that many of the teams have great discipline. Um, so we need to have a lot of those characteristics. Um, and then, uh, you know, maybe our past teams have been uh, teams that have been very long and very athletic and teams that have been able to react with great, you know, quickness to loose balls. And, and uh, so we want to bring those characteristics as well. Maybe we, and again, we don't really have a full roster right now, so only time will tell what style of play that we have. But certainly, um, as I look into what we would like to be, uh, maybe is, is a little bit different stylistically than many of the Big Ten teams. Um, at Nevada, we played a, a fairly quick um, you know, style of play, both offensively and defensively. I do know we won't play any zone uh, defense, um, regardless of what social media uh, suggest maybe on a game that we don't win, um, but we will be a man-to-man -man defensive team. I do know that for sure, and I think that's the best way to prepare our players for beyond college on the basketball floor is to is to play that. That's half the game, 
And uh, obviously that's what happens at the NBA level, it's what happens in the G League level, and it's what happens for the most part in Europe. And so if any of our players play beyond college, um, I want to try to prepare them that, that, I best, that we best can for their career. So um, stylistically, we got to have some of the Big Ten characteristics, but also we want to be different um, so that when we play uh, teams in conference, that maybe it's not a steady diet of what they see every night. Our, our fans don't care about man versus zone. They just want 100 percent of free throws made. Uh -huh. <laughs> I understand that dilemma. Too. <laughs> Hi, Eric. I'm Beth Harris, AP. Have you had a chance to meet with anyone on the current roster? And did you get a chance to speak to Ronnie before his announcement today? Beth, we have, uh, because we landed last night at, uh, I don't know, 6 o'clock or whatever, and, and by the time we got to the hotel, I, I do plan on meeting uh, with the guys today um, that are on campus sometime this afternoon. I've texted all the players um, that are currently either on the roster um, recruits that um, have committed and maybe decommitted, um, you know. So, so from that aspect, we're going to try to, uh, you know, communicate with with everybody. Today will be a, a huge day for that um, as well. Um, but just from a time standpoint, we, you know, woke up today, came here for prep for this, and then we'll get right into uh, trying to get with our guys as quick as we can today. Stay here. Jim Alexander from the Orange County Register, also known as Lucas Caddy here. Um, given your breadth of experience, you've been in, you coached in the CBA, you've coached in the D-League, NBA, college, sort of, I guess Nevada would be a mid-major, and, and you've coached in a major conference. How does all of that combine to inform what you do as a coach with a particular roster? For example, what you're going to have this here, this year. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, with my unique background on the landscape of, of college athletics right now, I've, I feel like I fit in, you know, really well because of the fact that you mentioned some of those other places that I've coached and some of those other places you have changing rosters. Um, and with the way the portal is in all of, of, regardless of sport in college athletics right now, we're, it's constantly evolving, it's constantly changing. Um, and so, you know, I think through, uh, through all of our experiences, entering a new league, um, something Jen and I talked about, like, um, I think when you've coached in a whole bunch of different leagues, like, going into the Big Ten does not, you know, paralyze me. And, and um, looking down the sidelines at, at, at guys like Tom Izzo and, and guys that are legends is not going to, you know, it's not going to affect me because I've looked down the sidelines and seen Phil Jackson and Pat Riley. So, um, <laughs> But I, I, I think that, you know, the, the, the way the roster ends up, nobody knows um, because we do have some, some work that we have to do and, and, uh, and we look forward to doing that. Hey coach, Casey Kasler with the Daily Trojan. Given the fact that it's gonna be pretty much an only roster, how do you hope to enrich the chemistry on this team heading into the next year? I think that's a great question. I mean, chemistry right now for all of us, um, you know, whether it's, you know, coach, Coach Riley right now getting ready for, you know, for football. I think that all of us, uh, because, because there are transfers that are new to, to, to you know, every sport team on, on every campus, chemistry becomes a, a huge um, important piece. It's always an important piece. It has been for, you know, since sport was around. But it becomes even more important in today's day and age. And certainly uh, the summer, I mean, we do some things in the summer every Friday. Uh, is a non-basketball uh, time for us where we try to work on bonding and getting to know each other. We do a thing before practice called Voices and Choices, a little five-minute segment where we talk about things that are unrelated to basketball and how we can become uh, closer as a unit um, off the floor. So, um, you know, b team bonding, team chemistry, talking about it, bringing in guest speakers, because um, obviously, you know, basketball is a team sport, and uh, the only way to make it work is to have great team chemistry, and it's part of the recruiting process as well, getting players to understand uh, what their role is and try to clearly define roles as early as possible is important to a chemistry standpoint. Go ahead, 
Crash Collier, Inbird Media. Coach, how do you feel about the recruiting momentum you've gained already since yesterday, especially with UMass transfer Josh Cohen uh, flipping from Arkansas to USC? I don't think I'm allowed to comment on any um, recruits until you know they officially sign. Um, so I don't want to uh, comment on, Good job. on any. <laughs> that was a test, coach. That was a test. <laughs> I know my complaints. <laughs> But I, really, I do think we can get some momentum going from a recruiting standpoint. Duke needed a win with the LA Times. And you, Coach, you were talking about building community and reaching out. What does that look like to you? What are your kind of steps in terms of uh, reaching out to community and getting the city galvanized by this team? Well, one, it's just it's, it's being out um, and, and uh, being accessible. But the, the real star in the community stuff um, is, is my wife, Danielle. Um, she's, her ideas on how to get involved in the community and what that looks like. Um, she's probably working on a plan today on what it looks like because each, you know, each area that we've lived in, you know, it's, it, it's gonna look different, you know, on, on, on what that means and what that looks like. Um, but I know that, you know, for, for us as a family, um, you know, there's kind of two communities almost, you know, there's the campus community and um, like for sure I know I'm going to be a part of that. I can't wait to, Jen, will you bring me on some road football games? <laughs> I mean, I want to I, I want to be uh, at as many sporting events on campus as I can be. Um, I know like I, I, I like to walk every day and I'll probably, I heard there's a little two mile uh, course on campus or through campus or around campus so um, I want to I want to get to know the students too you know because we need students at our games and um, you do that by having by, by being accessible and, and communicating and talking and so uh, when I go on my two mile walk which will be a six mile walk because that's what I like to do uh, it'll that's a lot of time you can say hi to students and uh, and like I said Danielle will I don't know if anybody can be out in the community more than what she will be with some of the stuff that she does and it's been well documented what she's done in the past but again i don't know what charity events she'll put together but it'll be plenty for sure all right one more uh yeah hi uh rich rubin from on three which is a mic right there there you go uh, rich rubin from on three and we are sc coach uh first of all welcome Thank um you. when you were looking at the opportunity at USC versus what you had at Arkansas, um, and especially the, the fan support, because uh, it's a it's a big difference at least right now. What were the what were the things about this job that led led you to believe that this was a better job, a better coaching opportunity than you had at Arkansas? Well, Rich, uh, first of all, you know our time at, at Arkansas was. Uh, you know, we worked for an incredible athletic director, Hunter Juracek, and and uh, we were really happy there. I mean, it's a, it's it's one of the best basketball jobs in the country. There's no question about that. The, you know, we've had uh, three straight years of, of being sold out in September, and that building holds 20,000 people in Bud Walton. Um, and obviously, you know, three straight Sweet 16s minus this year. Um, and two elite eights. I mean, it's 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 a proven program that has won in the past. They won in the past, you know. They they won in the past before I got there with Nolan Richardson and Eddie Sutton, and they're going to win again um, after you know my time there. Um, but this is an opportunity. Uh, the more Jen and I talked, uh, the more I don't know if you know Jen, but I had great angst because <laughs> like, could she hurry up and make a decision? <laughs> Because we really, you know, we believe uh, that with all the things going on with the USC brand, uh, with going into the Big Ten, uh, that this is this is a really uh, an incredible fit for us as a family and an incredible fit for for USC. I think it's it's great all around, and um, you know, we ended, I, I've seen the attendance figures at, at both places and. You know, I hope that um, the people in Arkansas feel like we had a big impact on on the attendance growing uh, in Bud Walton. And, and if you look at the numbers before we got there and the numbers of what they were 
you know, this year, um, I think we did have an impact on that. And I certainly hope that we have a great impact on our attendance here as well. All right, that is going to conclude our press conference here. As I mentioned, there will be additional uh, media opportunities in the back with Coach. But thank you all so much for coming. And again, uh, welcome to the Trojan family, Eric Hustleman.